the Holy Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَوْ كَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ وَادٍ مِنْ ذَهَبْ لَتَمَنَّا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ وَادِيَانِ وَلَا يَمْلَأُ فَاهُ إِلَّا التُرَابِ He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if a man were to have a whole valley full of gold, he would want to have a second valley full of gold. But at the end, only dust will fill his mouth. Another of our deep problems as human beings is this hubb al-mal, this love of wealth. It's no coincidence that some of the very first verses of the Holy Qur'an to be revealed were condemnations of this human sleepy acquisition of stuff. A futile exercise because the more we have, the more we tend to want. Al-haakum al uh, rivalry in worldly increase has distracted you. <laughs> There's three important lessons in those two words. Uh, not just the problematic nature of wanting worldly, worldly increase, but the fact that we compete with each other. Mm. This guy's got a billion, I want to have two billion or I can't sleep well. And then the fact that al hakum it distracts you. Hatta zurtum al maqabir until you go to the graves. Uh, all of these people who at the very last moment of their life are still checking the FTSE uh, and the Dow Jones just to see what's happening to their fortune. Uh, they can't see the dark mouth of death yawning in front of them, waiting to, to swallow them whole. But this is how we are. Uh, but at the end, only dust will fill our mouths. The Holy Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hmm? this is a hadith uh, Qudsi, Yabna Adam, uh, O son of man, Hallaka min malika illa ma akalta fa afnait, aw labista fa ablait, aw tasaddaqta bihi fa amdait. O son of Adam, do you own? any of your wealth except for something which you end up eating and you pass it on, pass it away, it goes through you, it's no longer yours, you destroy it. Or you wear it and you wear it out. Or you give it in sadaqah and make it eternal. Hmm. This is the irony. We think, ah, if I give 10 pounds to the Cambridge Muslim College, uh, I'll be 10 pounds poorer. Nope. Actually, you're poorer if you hold on to it because it's not going to go with you into the grave. But these sadaqat, uh, they are investments, deposits in the eternal bank. This tijaratan lantabur, this transaction which never diminishes, uh, this hisab, this account which is the account of the akhirah. And the believer knows this and with an expression of pain perhaps he produces his zakat when he can, as much as he can, and his sadaqah and his lillah and his zakat al-fitr and these things. But there's an element of pain which is foolish because he's actually liable to lose these things. He may not even enjoy them himself if he walks around in his life with all of these coins jingling in his pocket, what should he do? Put them in the bank. Uh, but not the bank of this corporation or that corporation that may or may not in the current uh, reckless world of casino capitalism and financial freefall go on. Mm. But instead, the only bank which once the deposit has been made with a bismillah will keep it for eternity and will yield dividends eternally. Uh, that's intelligence. That's wisdom. But unfortunately, even though ours is a world of overflowing wealth, istifadat al-mal, gigantic cornucopias of money, and money breeding money thanks to the riba system, riba upon riba upon riba, and derivatives and futures and all of these very strange instruments which human ingenuity concocts in order to conjure money out of money that you haven't even borrowed yet. It's a very strange, magical world. 
so much money and yet so much poverty. So many rich people, so many poor people, but the istiqtab, the polarization of wealth between rich and poor gets greater and greater and greater. And we know that this brings the divine anger because it's an injustice. And having two billion doesn't feel very different in practice to having one billion or even one million for most purposes. Huh? But for the poor, having $200 is very different to having $100, but still they get poorer and the rich get richer and the world is kind of shaking as a result. It's one of the major imbalances of our time. And so this condemnation of Al-Hakum al-Takathur was from the very beginning of Revelation but is absolutely appropriate to our time now. And Islam is the religion that says give and give and give. The zakat and the sadaqah and the nafila obligations and the optional forms of giving. Again and again, a child is born, there's the aqiqah. Huh? Somebody dies, there is the inheritance which can't go to just one person but gets distributed out again, particularly to the young. This is our system. Give, give, give. Uh, we are a people who are mutasaddiqeen, who give, and sadaqah is related to sidq, which is a word which means sincerity, uh, truthfulness, being real. This is the nature of the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alladhi kana ajwad in this, who is the most generous of people, wa kana ajwad ma yakunu fi Ramadan, and was at his most generous in the month of Ramadan. وَلَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَجْوَدُ بِالْخَيْرِ مِنَ الْرِيحِ الْمُرْسَلَةِ The Holy Prophet وسلم, was more generous and swift in giving, doing good, than the wind let loose. In other words, it's, there's no hisab, there's no calculation. He just gives and gives and gives because he's not afraid of poverty. So that's the moral aspect, but there's also the human aspect and one of the most challenging aspects of prophecy. Uh, is that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed to be with the Masakeen, the Masakeen who are the really poor, the destitute, those who have nothing. Ya Allah, ij'al quta ala Muhammadin kifafa, he used to pray. Make the food for the family of Muhammad enough for today. Uh, that would panic us. We think, oh, maybe we'll run out in three months' time. I've got a cushion, uh, the bank says this, I've got these financial projections, but tomorrow, that's inconceivable. And he used to pray, وَحْشُرْنِي فِي زُمْرَةِ الْمَسَاكِينَ resurrect me, resurrect me in the company of the destitute. Not the super rich, not the sleek Hollywood actors and the so-called elites, who are our role models and who everybody wants to gossip about, but the poor, the asylum seekers, the refugees, the homeless, the people sleeping rough, the broken hearted. Because Allah is عَنْدَ kasirati qulubuhum, with the broken hearted. The Holy Prophet وسلم, wished to be resurrected with those people. And this is challenging because we like to have those coins jingling in our pockets. Uh, there's a story that says that when the first gold and silver coin were minted, created, when somebody first had this idea, Iblis alayhi lana, raised them and put them to his eyes and kissed them and said, Man ahabbakuma uh, fahuwa abdi haqqa, whoever loves you is in reality my slave, my servant. So, the wealth that the believer has, which can be legitimate, halal wealth. Yum did kum bi amwalin wa banin. God blesses you with wealth and children. It can be a blessing. Uh, has to be on the basis of the lack of the heart's attachment to those things. It's for sadaqah. It's for supporting the family. It's for supporting neighbors. It's for giving iftar to people who can't afford it. It's for hospitality. And this is the Edward Ubil Khairi min al Mursala, 
which is the quality of the Holy Prophet وسلم, more generous in giving what is good than the winds let loose. Such a, a beautiful kind of desert image, just free, unrestrained giving. Why? Because there is peace in the heart and there is no khashyata imlaq, fear of poverty, an extraordinary state. So uh, the coins that are in our pockets, the numbers that uh, are in our bank balances uh, are to be uh, accounted for. Uh, it's said that you take them out only when you have taken them out of their source fi hilli wa infaquha fi haqi you take them in a way that is halal and you dispense with them again in the way that represents what is the 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 right of human beings in other words they are part of our service so in this month this time when there is less to spend our unnecessary wealth on when we have to walk past cafes and so forth, even if they were open uh, and we can't do anything about it. And at the end of the day, perhaps there's more coins jangling in our pockets than there were before. Uh, this is the month of giving. This is the month of Ummah solidarity. This is the month of remembering neighbours, of thinking of family members who we haven't checked up on for a long time. This is the time of Silat al-Rahim. This is the time of connecting family ties. Fear God concerning whom you question each other and the ties of kinship. Important in our religion. Uh, how are the old doing, particularly at present? Make sure you know. Make sure they feel attended to, that they feel noticed that somebody cares because this the age of wealth has become the age of loneliness as well but ours is not the ummah of loneliness ours is the ummah of solidarity ummatun wahida a, a single ummah and we are to be an exemplary community to show how human beings can and should be together in solidarity in cooperation in sharing not in hoarding but in sharing, in giving, we are to be open-handed people. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month, when we have fewer worldly temptations to distract us, and when perhaps we are thinking of higher things, and we have tasted in worship and in the Qur'an something that is sweeter and truer and more nourishing to our hearts than any physical pleasure or experience of status could ever be when we have been shown an alternative, reminded of what we truly are and of our homeland to which we are called. May he make us people of generosity, of people who are soft-hearted towards the poor, people who do not just pay lip service to the sunnah, but actually walk in the footsteps of the chosen one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by loving the poor, by supporting the poor, by seeking them out and by, as it were, putting our money where our mouths might be, by actually being people of generosity, of jeweled in this blessed month. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to this and grant us the, uh, the, the blessings of Ramadan in its uh, blessed nature for the poor, as people of giving, of people who are not misers, people who are open-hearted and open-handed, an example to an increasingly lonely and selfish and self-centered age.